الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين وكفى والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحاب أجمعين ومن سن سنته واهتدى بهذه لا يوم الدين ما بعد فعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ألم يأني للذين آمنوا أن تخشع قلوبهم لذكر الله وما نزل من الحق صدق الله العظيم ما ديا إن respected brothers and sisters in Islam السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته ما ديا brothers and sisters Allah سبحانه وتعالى had created insan and Allah سبحانه وتعالى knows the nature of insan Allah knows the weaknesses of every insan and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had recommended what insan should do in order to overcome those weaknesses for example Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said خَلَقَنَ الْإِنسَانِ وَنَعْلَمُ مَا تُوَسْفِسُ بِهِ نَفْسُ which means that verily I have created every human being and I know I know what whispers in his heart Meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what are the weaknesses of insan. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَنَحْنُ أَقْرَبُ إِلَيْهِ مِنْ حَبْلِ الْوَرِيدِ And I am closer to every human being than that person's own juggler vein. Right? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows our weaknesses. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had also mentioned in Quran, that I am willing to forgive those mistakes that you will make. I'm not going to hold you accountable over the mistakes that you will make because I know that insan is, is daif, insan is weak. And not only that, that insan is weak, but insan is zaluman jahula. Insan is by nature that when he power comes to insan, insan uh, oppresses fellow human beings. So very few human beings are those that when, when power comes to them, they are in a position of power, that they, they do justice. Very few. Vast majority of human beings are such that when power comes to them, they oppress people. In Surah Al-Alaq, Iqra' bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq, right? In that particular surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that it is because, and this is amazing brothers, look how the hikmat and the wisdom of Allah. Allah said that it is I, Allah, who have linked the needs of human beings with other human beings Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that if you would be in a position that you will not need anyone then you will oppress people you'll say I don't need you meaning a doctor if he opens a clinic and no nobody is getting sick in the city Nobody, everybody is healthy. So this doctor will go out of business because nobody is coming to his clinic. How is he going to pay, pay the bills? So doctor is in need of sick people. He, he needs sick people to come and visit him for his business to, to thrive. And sick people are in need of doctors. Right? Similarly, a shopkeeper is in need of customers, right? Customers need shops to go to, right? You are in need of your wife, she is in need of a husband. Children need parents, parents need children. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that I have linked the needs 
of human beings with each each others if if there is no need then a person will become a dictator a person will become zalim so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that insan becomes zalim oppressor when that person thinks that i'm absolute i do not need anybody so allah in quran have said allahu samad allah is the one who does not need anyone besides allah everybody needs every others so zaluman and then jahula insan by nature is ignorant meaning you are an ignorant person i am an ignorant person why i am saying this because the amount of knowledge that we do not know compare that unknown knowledge with the little amount of knowledge that you and i have so you'll find out that we know very little against what we do not know right for example today is juma right sunna is to recite with surah brothers right surah al kahf in surah al kahf there are few stories but the most famous story of surah al kahf is, is is which one brothers musa and khizr right musa and khizr now remember who was musa musa was sahib al kitab nabi a nabi a special nabi who received a wonderful book called torat tibyana likulli shay allah said tibyana likulli shay wa huda wa rahma allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in torat i had given description of all the things that people were in need of so it was a wonderful book a complete book for that time so musa alaihi salam was a nabi who received this great book plus he is the only prophet who got to listen to the voice of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala right so imagine the amount of knowledge that he possessed but allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to show musa that wa fawqa kulli dhi ilmin alim that above every knowledgeable person is another person who is more knowledgeable so once musa alaihi salatu wasalam thought that he is the most knowledgeable so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala arranged a meeting between musa and khidr knowledge of not sharia musa alaihi salam had the knowledge of sharia sharia means islamic law khidr did not had that knowledge but khidr had another knowledge which is called takwini knowledge takwini knowledge is a special knowledge that allah subhanahu wa taala gave to only khidr and that is that when a, a certain incident happens in the world why does it happens why for example a person died all of a sudden why did he die a person met an accident why did what is the reason behind it a person let's say a family had a had children one of them the child all of a sudden died why you became rich why a rich person became poor why so there is no answer to why but there is a reason allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is making this happen what is the reason it is called takween right so that knowledge allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave to khidr now musa had no knowledge about this kind of knowledge takweeni he knew do and don'ts islamic law so when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala arranged a meeting between musa and khidr musa alaihi salatu wasalam was completely taken back by this kind of knowledge so he said to khidr hal tu'allimani hal attabi'uka ala an tu'allimani mimma 'allimta rushda
if I spend some time with you, would you teach me this kind of knowledge? So Khidr said that it is not possible. He said, why? He said, because لَمْ تَسْتَطِيعَ مَعِيَ sabra." certain things and then you will question me why and you cannot ask me why because whatever I will do I will do with the hukum from Allah yes in your sharia in your law that is that could be haram so you as a prophet of Allah as a law abiding uh, slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you will ask me question that well astaghfirullah haram how can you do that? He said, you cannot question me. But Musa said, okay, give me a chance. So whenever Khidr did an act, Musa lost patience. He asked why. So Khidr said, look, I told you not to question. Right? So three incidents happened. After that, he said, Qala hadha firaqu bayni wa baynik. That's it. You go your, your way, I go my way. But my dear, dear brothers and sisters, Musa wasalam, came to know that there's so much knowledge out there that, that he does not know. And now we are talking about Ulul Azmi min al Rusul, a great prophet. What about you? Your level of knowledge. What? about me, my level of, our knowledge together, right, compared to what we do not know, right, you will find that we are all ignorant people. We are all ignorant people. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows it very well that human beings possess very little knowledge. وَمَا أُوتِيتُ مِنَ الْعِلْمِ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا Allah said, what I have given to human beings in, in the form of knowledge is very, very, very little. Very little. So you and I are completely ignorant. Right? For example, if I were to ask you, you asked me, where were I before I was born? None of us have any answer. We'll be scratching our head. Where, where were we before we were born? Right? Where will we go after our death? We'll be again scratching our head. We know only what our Rasul told, only, only that much. But beyond that, we have no knowledge where we are going after our death. So how is it that the amount of years that we live on this planet 40, 50, 60, 70, whatever it is. That, you know, we acquired some form of knowledge. But the most strange thing is that life after death is not going to be that short. It, it will not be 40, 60, 70 years long. It will be unlimited. Khalidina fiha. It will be unlimited. I mean, Allah literally will kill time. al waqt Allah created time. Just like Allah created insan. Allah created sun and the moon. And then Allah will finish. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will finish this planet. Allah, similarly, Allah will finish this uh, thing called al waqt time. So there will be nothing like time left. So in Jannah, Inshallah, when you'll go, you will not get old. Why? Because there's nothing like time. Just live Khalidina Fiha Abada. Just live. In this world, we say, how long are we going to live? Allah says, just live. There is nothing like time left. I finished the time. There's nothing like Al Waqt. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? created you and me and we do not know where were we before our birth similarly brothers and sisters we do not know all this the details of what will happen after we die we do not right my dear brothers and sisters that is called jahula insan is completely ignorant 
Now, having said that, Allah created you and me like this. Allah created us, right? I want you to please pay attention to this one very, very, very important thing. I'll repeat one more time. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us weak, daif. Allah created us jahula, ignorant, right? Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us life and the other life would be successful. Rabbana atina fil dunya hasana wa fil akhirat. This dunya would be good, akhirah would be good. Quran is putting emphasis on that one thing. Allah is saying, do not stop doing this one thing. Can anybody in the audience guess what is that one thing? Yes. But brothers, I'm talking about reminders. I told you that insan is zaif, right? Insan forgets. In, insan needs reminders. That one thing, my dear brother and sister, is what? Death. Discuss, think about death. Don't avoid thinking about it. Think about it. And not once. But in one hadith, she Rasulullah said, how many times? 20 times at least. And this 20 is just a, a suggestion that Rasulullah gave to, I think, Aisha radiallahu anha. Right? Every day, everybody should think about death and all the events that will come after death. And Rasulullah did tell us in hadith some of the events that will happen to every person. I give you this uh, example from Quran. Please pay attention. Surah um, Maryam. Right? Now, brother, how many among us have really thought about this ayah? And if you have thought about it, when was the last time you, you, you thought about it? What is Allah saying? Allah said, there is not a single individual amongst you who is exempt from crossing the bridge. وَإِمْ مِنْكُمْ إِلَّا وَارِدُهَا There is not a single human being amongst you who is exempt from walking on that bridge. Allah said, كَانَ عَلَىٰ رَبِّكَ حَتْمًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that I have written it. It is going to happen. And because it's a big, big, big event, so Allah used maqdiyya. It is already decided. It is written and it is decided that every single individual is going to crawl, walk on that bridge. Which bridge is that? As Sirat. When was the last time you thought that how it will be that when my turn will come to cross the bridge? It is going to happen. It's going to happen. When was the last time, brothers, you thought, brothers and sisters, you thought that, let me uh, pick up a book of hadith and let me see what is the explanation that Rasulullah had given regarding this bridge. Did you, when was the last time, brother, you, you and sister, you read about it? With all due respect to you, I don't think that we even take time to read about it. Right? In all these books that you see, for the last 29 years, I'm seeing these books sitting on, on these shelves. 29 years I have been seeing. The books inside the library, nobody comes and reads. Don't tell me that so I don't have time. You have time. You have enough time. Just check, just scrutinize yourself. How much time you spend on WhatsApp every day? <laughs> just WhatsApp every day. How much time you spend on Facebook every day? 
just browsing, just browsing. So you have time, but your priorities have changed. You think Quran, Hadith, you know, when I'll get old, maybe then I will change. Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that think about death every day at least 20 times. Right? Now about the bridge. What is the explanation that Rasulullah Sallallahu gave? I'll summarize it for you, right? Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, I'll be standing on one side of the bridge. And this bridge would be such, this is the summary, would be such that beneath the bridge will not be water. It will be, be fire of hell. So it will not be water, fire of hell, flames. <coughs> and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will call you by angels and say, come, you come. Your turn to go over this bridge. If you were sahibul iman, person with strong iman, Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that once you'll step on the bridge, in a flash, you'll find yourself standing on the other side of the bridge. In a flash. Like in a second, you could say. Standing. You'll say, done? I'm done? You'll say, yeah. You are an awesome Muslim. You are a good believer. So yes, done. Go. Then, some, somebody among us will be called, that person will be walking. Imagine that moment from this end of the bridge to the other end of the bridge. And you'll be looking down the, the flames of, of fire of, of, of hell, which would be 100 times more hot than the, the fire of this world. And you'll be sweating, you'll be nervous, nervous. What if this bridge would open and I will drop down? Because he had seen people who came before him, some of them, it happened to them. That the bridge opened and they went boom inside the, the flames. But because you are Sahibul Iman, you will cross that bridge inshallah safely. So based on, the, on your Iman, how strong is your Iman? You know, in other words, your Iman will determine the speed with which you are going to cross that bridge. Now, Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa said that I, brother, this is where Rasulullah is, rahmatul lil alameen, right? Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa said that I'll be standing on, the, on this side of the bridge and when you will be called, what will be Rasulullah saying? Allahumma. Yes, Sallim, Sallim. Allahumma, Sallim, Sallim. Allahumma, Sallim, Sallim. Oh Allah, make this Ummati cross this bridge in great, with great comfort. Salamti, comfort. For every Ummati of His Rasulullah will be standing on the, on the starting point of that, that bridge. So my, that's why but it is said that there is nobody who is, should be more de dearer to you than Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Because Rasulullah would be working for you on that day as well. When يَوْمَ لَا يَنْفَعُ مَالٌ وَلَا وَلَا بَنُونَ إِلَّا مَنْ أَتَ اللَّهَ بِقَلْبٍ سَلِيمٍ On that day, no amount of money, no person, your own family members will be saying, نَفْسِي 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 only Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was saying, Ummati, Ummati, Ummati. So Rasulullah Sallallahu will be there for you, working for you. Right? Especially at the time of crossing this bridge. And then Rasulullah said that when you reach the other side of the bridge, Rasulullah will come to congratulate you. So oh, my, my Ummati crossed this bridge. Now you can go to paradise. How many times, brother, we really think about, about that bridge? Right? We, uh, uh, we don't. We just do not know. Although it is a part of our belief that whatever Allah has said is what? It's truth, right? Woman asdaqu min Allahi qila. Woman asdaqu min Allahi haditha. Who could be more truthful than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Now Allah is saying that this bridge 
right? It's something that you are going to be walking on one day. And let me repeat again. Please link yourself with Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, again, I don't want to spend much time. I'll, let me quickly make two points here. Look at this ayah one more time. وَإِمْ مِنْكُمْ إِلَّا وَارِدُهَا Brother, inshallah, in our next, in our new masjid, I'd like to share this with you. In our new masjid, we'll ha we have big screens on both sides, huge screens. And the reason is that, one of the reasons why we want this screen is that when I'm talking to you, right? I'm saying, I'm reading this ayah, you are saying, yes, yes, yes. I want you to see that. It will, it will pop up on the screen, inshallah. So you will be reading with me. And then I will be explaining to you word by word. So that when you go home, you will feel that, that today I learned one more ayah from Quran. Inshallah, make dua that our new majid, you know, opens up very soon, inshallah. Anyhow, so this, this ayah, look at this. Wa im minkum illa. There is not, wa in means la here. There is not a single person minkum amongst you. Illa but. Illa but wariduha that he is going to be walking on that bridge. I told you last week as well. Let me repeat again. Whenever Allah says no, then Allah says but. Like La ilaha, there's no God, illallah, but Allah. It means only Allah. So here also Allah is saying, Wa imminkum, there is no one amongst you. Illa but wariduha that every single person is going to uh, go on that bridge. Not a single exception. So Allah is saying, not a single exception. So, brother, are, why aren't you not thinking about that, that moment when you'll be called? to walk on that bridge. Why don't you take it seriously? And then, Kana ala rabbika hatma. Hatma means definite. Hatm means definite. Allah saying, your Rabb is definitely going to make this happen. And maghdiya means it is decided, no change. Allah doesn't change his, Allah does not change his words. You will never see Allah changing his, his words. So Allah put this concept of jasr, of this um, bridge, so forcefully. But why is it that we don't talk about it? You know, when we, we get together, we always talk about money, stocks, business, movies, sports, weather you know, everything, which is fine. But brother, there's something more serious to be talked about. Ironically, this talk is out of fashion. It is not the norm. People don't talk about life after death. They say it's boring, it's uh, uh, depressing. But it's not, if it was dis uh, uh, depressing, Rasulullah should have stopped us from talking about it. Rasulullah said, talk about death every day at least 20 times. Said. It's not uh, uh, depressing. So, so when you talk about death, brothers, you, are, you will be inshallah enjoying this life that you'll see that Allah has given you this opportunity to prepare for life after death. So this is the point that I wanted to make. That insan is zaif, yes. Insan is weak, yes. Insan is jahul, ignorant, yes. In, insan forgets, yes. But then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, I, want, I have commanded you to do dhikr, meaning remind yourself. Remind yourself. When you will remind yourself, what will ha happen? وَذَكِّرْ فَإِنَّ الذِّكْرَ تَنْفَعُ mu'minin. When you will remind yourself, it will benefit you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help me understand. Subhanallah bihamdi, subhanakallah bihamdi, wa ashiru ala ilaha.